little fellow gardeners. Well, we're here in the garden center today, and we want to we want to explain a little more about using these uh, gallon milk jugs and tea jugs versus using the black pipe. So many people are questioning me why we would use the cloth over the black pipe, but not use the cloth over the gallon jugs. So we're going to try to explain that today to you in this video. I just had a gentleman call from Georgia, and he was watching that video, and he talked about it. Some people was questioning about how to not use the, the uh, cloth and to keep the soil out of going in those jugs. This gentleman said to take your drimmer tool, if you got a drimmer tool with a little teeny bit on it, and you stick it in the, bar, in the jug and just make a little slit, and the soil won't go in that little slit. You know, make that slit about a half inch long, and it's just about an eighth of an inch wide, and that's one way you can do it. That's why he does it. He uses a drimmer tool. So what we're going to tell you today we're going to take this jug and show you how we have done. Now, we cut, we punched a little teeny hole here with about an eighth inch bit. Up here, we put one here, one here, one over here. We try to put one on each side, at the bottom and at the top. So, uh, and by the way, we had a fellow by the name of Hank. Uh, he says he's a blind man and he can't see this, and so I need to explain it a little fuller in detail, so that's what I'm going to try to do is go through this in full detail for Hank. He's down in Texas. And Hank, what we've done, we've drilled an eighth, of inch of hole, an eighth of an inch of hole at the close to the bottom of the jug on all four sides, and then we came up to the top by the, by the cap and down about an inch from the cap. We've drilled four uh, holes there that's about an eighth inch in diameter, one on each side. And that way, when we put that down in there, and the water is filling that, those jugs up, as it pushes that water up through those little holes at the bottom, it will push air out at the top. And then, when your plant uses that water, and it's sucking that water down out of them holes, and up, up through that soil, it's creating a vacuum of pulling on these top holes that your air will go into. Now, a lot of people are questioning me, well, where does the air come from? Well, if you've got your hole at, at four inches up, or five inches up, I'm sorry, and six inch pipe, you know you've got an inch of air in those pipes. So now then they can understand how that air gets in that pipe. But that, how they're going to get in these jugs, well, it's the same way your air will come through that hole, and as this water wicks up through your soil, sucking the water down out of these jugs, it's going to pull air in through these top holes. And then as you fill this uh, tub back up through this pipe, as you push that water down through there, and it goes out through there all to all these jugs, and pushes in these little holes at the bottom, it's going to push your air out at the top. And so that's the reason it'll, it'll create a vacuum when it goes out, and then when it comes back, it pushes and pushes the air back up. Well, the air will come out these holes and go over to that little hole that you got on the side and go back out or either come up through your soil. So don't you worry about that. Just build your, uh, your tub with these jugs. Put four holes at the bottom and four holes at the top of each jug. You can put seven around in one of these red tubs. It takes seven of these jugs in there to fill it up. And then one in the middle to make it full. That's, that way you have eight jugs in there and all you have is a little bit of soil right down here around this inside jug of filling this up. And so that's what we want to do. We also, between each crack that these, it has between these jugs, we put a either a Dr. Pepper or a Coca-Cola bottle or some kind of root beer or something, Pepsi. These are kind of good hard bottles. These are going to work. You punch four little holes up towards the bottom of it, and you punch four little holes down towards the top of it. And you turn it upside down and put it down in that hole, and that kind of helps fill up the cracks, gives more water capacity, and it, you have less soil wicking the water. You're going to have the soil right here around this inside jug is the only place you're going to have any soil touching the water down in there. But don't worry, that soil won't go through those little teeny holes. Now, yes, if you drill your holes like uh, one of my uh, employees did the other day, got a big half-inch bit, 
and drill these holes like this, this is a no-no. Soil will go in there. So we don't want to drill them that big. We only want them to drill them from a 3 8 size down to an eighth of an inch. That's just the size of a lead pencil, uh, the, the wooden pencil that you, you use in school, down to about a match stem size. Anywhere in that size, the soil won't go through. But yes, if you have these holes the size of your finger or bigger, then yeah, the soil's gonna go in them. So that's a no-no to big, drill that big a hole. Now, to get this pipe into one of these gallon jugs, all you do is cut the threads off of the top of this uh, jug right below the threads, cut it off, and it makes a hole big enough that you can put this pipe right down inside of it and that's where your water is going to go into that jug. Then you put your jug back down in your barrel over to the side, put your soda pop barrel in there, and you've got it all fixed, ready to put your soil in. And the potting soil is not going to go in those little holes. You just poke it down in these cracks around these barrels, around these jugs, the first thing, down in around there into the bottom, and then go ahead and fill it up here a little ways, just above the caps of the gallon jugs. Then you put a half a cup of sustain and a fourth a cup of sea mineral scattered in there on your potting soil and then you put your soil plumb on up fill it plumb on up to the top and you're ready to get after it and plant now we're going to show you another one with the pipes in it and explain to you how the reason we have to cover those ends of that pipe up if you didn't it would fill up with soil so bear with us just a moment we're going to change these out and get the other pipe to make you how this works, show you how this works. Okay, now then we're ready to show you about the pipe in the bucket. Remember now, on the jugs, you use no cloth over it. You don't need to because not any big holes to have to cover over to keep the soil from going in the buckets. But you take on this pipe, see when you use two of these pieces of pipe, now we're using the five inch hole on the side of the bucket, that's five inches up, you can see the little hole right down on the side, that's the only hole we're going to have in this tub. One hole, five inches up. We're going to put the two six inches pieces of pipe. And this is where the soil problem is. The soil will go right down in here and fill these pipe up. So we're using the cloth to cover over these so they can't get soil in them. Now, yes, some of the people have asked, well, can't they take cloth and put it right over the end of this and tape it up? Yes, you can. You can do every one of them like that. And you see, and, and put it around there, a little piece of cloth, tape it around here, and yes, you've got it closed off. Because you've got water will go through this cloth. You've got cracks in this that'll get water and get in. So you have to do one, two, three, four ends. Well, if you've got just a few tubs, yes, you can cover those ends of the pipe with, with the cloth. But if you've got, if you're making 1,000, 1,200 of these a week like we do, we don't have time to cover four ends times 1,200 barrels. That's 4,800 of these we'd have to do a week. We don't want to do that, so what we do, we put the two pipe in there, hit it towards the hole, and then we take this cloth, which is four foot off a three foot roll. We, we, we take a three foot roll, cut four feet off of it. We lay the four foot crossways, and then, then we go in here like into this here and put this cloth up against the ends and put it like to the sides, and you can see as you put the soil in there, there is no place for that soil to get in those pipe like you were worried about. We're stopping all of that soil and keeping it on top of this cloth, and it can't get in the ends of that pipe, but yet they can still get air into that pipe through that hole and through this cloth. So you put the cloth in like that, you fill this in with soil on both sides, come in with a little soil over the pipes, Put your fertilizer, your sustain, and your sea mineral in there. Then go ahead and fill it full of soil, and you got everything ready to go. You got to put the little pipe. We didn't put the little pipe. What did I do with that little white pipe, Jack? Right here it is. We put the pipe up, up close to the hole right there, like into that, your fill pipe. And like I tell you now, I, I, do, I preach putting this pipe in there, but then I don't use the pipe because I've got a... 50 or 100 of them in a row, and we put a drip pipe down through there and uh, run, the, run the water through that drip pipe and not use this pipe here. So, but if you've just got a few tubs, then yeah, you need this pipe, set you a funnel in it, 
pour your water in it until it runs out the hole and you're ready to go. Once a week you can do that. And that makes it so much easier on your growing than it is trying to grow in a bucket. It's got a bunch of holes in the bottom that you can't keep water in. So anyway, now we're going to show you how to plant those fruit trees in this same container using three, a four inch pipe instead of a six inch. So we'll take the six inch pipe out Get you the three four inch pipes and put in there. Now, you see you got the three pipes in there the same way as you had the two six inch. But the reason we use the four inch doing the fruit trees and put the hole at three inches instead of five inches because we still want an inch of air in the top of those four inch pipes. So if that pipe is four inch, naturally your hole has to be three inches up from the bottom. Or some of the people said to tell them, we want the hole one inch below the top of this pipe. But anyway, whichever way you want to describe it, we still put the three pipes in there. Here's your three inch hole. We turn the pipes towards that. You see the three inch hole right there in the side of that bucket. We put the three pipes towards it. We put our white pipe right over close to that drain hole. We take our four foot piece of cloth and we let crossways of those pipes. Do the same thing with this. Put it across there, push it down in there. Push it down in the cracks and turn it up the ends, the two ends of the pipes. We turn it up the side of the barrels. We turn this around in by like this right here and make it real neat. We can turn this back in behind and get it all down in here where you don't see this when you pull it full of soil. Then you put your soil in the two cracks, one on each side of the pipes, and just go to filling that up with soil, put your pipe down there close to your hole, and start filling it up, and you've got the same thing. Now, you're only going to put a little bit of soil over your pipes, and then you're going to take your fruit tree, you take it out of the five-gallon bucket if it's in a five-gallon bucket, or if it's bare root, either one, you set the fruit tree over in here, and you want that graft knot that you'll see on the graft tree, on that tree when you buy it, there'll be a little graft knot. You want that right above the soil line of this tub. Hold it up a little bit. You're going to have to put a little more soil in or maybe scoot some out if it's in a five-gallon bucket. Get it to where that graft knot is right above the top of this container. Then put your soil around the tree roots and fill it up. And there you're ready to go. You've got a fruit tree planted in one of these tubs. Okay, we, we brought you up here now. We've been talking about putting tree, fruit trees in these wicking buckets. So I've brought you back up here to one of the high tunnels. And uh, we're going to show you kind of what these trees look like if you grow them in these wicking tubs. I will tell you these trees have been in here three years. They were small trees when we put them in. These trees have not been maintained like they should have. I promise that. We got so much to take care of that we take care of the tomatoes and peppers and all before we take care of the fruit trees. For some reason or other, that's just not one of the things that I've spent a lot of time on. But anyway, this is what they look like. They'll make plums in the spring. This is a plum tree here, three years old. It'll make plums in the spring. Now, I will tell you that you can't put this in a high tunnel and leave it year round because it won't get enough cold chill hours to make it have fruit. So what we have to do is Either leave the doors open on the house if it's a full house of fruit trees or either take the fruit trees outside and let them stay all winter until they start getting some blossoms in the spring. And then if it, when it starts blossoming, if it's going to get down in the freezing weather, that's when we take them in the high tunnel to protect them from this freezing weather killing the blossoms on them. Other than that, we can leave them outside and let them go ahead and make fruit naturally if it doesn't get cold, but usually every year it will get cold about the time these fruit trees blossom. So that's what we have to watch for and protect during that blossoming stage. You can get them some blooms on them and it's going to freeze, pull them inside your high tunnel, just as long as they're kept above the freezing is all you need, and then they will be fine, and then you can put them back outside as soon as your freezing, freezing weather is over. But anyway, this is a plum tree, makes plums in the spring, and this over here is an apple tree. It's planted the same way, been in a wicking tub for three years, 
and uh, you can see the growth of it. Now it's in the taller blue tub where the other one's in the red tub. Doesn't make any difference. <clears throat> They're all just about the same. You will see the hole down there is up at three inches. I've got a little piece of pipe stuck in it down here to show you where this hole is right here. It's up here at three inches and we got four inch pipe in there. So we laid three pieces of four inch pipe crossways in the bottom of that bucket. Then we put the cloth over it like we always do. Remember, if you use the pipe, you got to use the cloth. If you don't use the pipe and use containers or something that don't have big holes in them, then you don't have to use the cloth. That's the law of it. Uh, that's the rule of it anyway. You just don't have to use it if you have just little small holes. Three inch inches of diameter or smaller. That's about the size of a wooden lead pencil. And so anyway, we put the three pipe in there, put the cloth over it, put a little bit of soil in there, put our fertilizers in there. Then we set the berry root fruit tree in, or if you get a, one out of a five gallon container, just pull the five gallon bucket off, set it down in there to where the top of the soil is up at about the top of where you're gonna have here. You may have to do a little adjusting on your soil to get it to the right height. And then just set it in there and put the, plant, the soil around it. And that's all you have to do. <clears throat> you can even put a, cut a piece of that cloth you know, and from the from the corner, cut over to the center, and then pull it around there, and keep the weeds from growing. If you don't want to leave it just like this right here, but uh, this is so many people have asked if you can grow these fruit trees in these wicking buckets, and we have to say yes, you can. It's uh, it's better than having them out where the grass is going to take them. Question. Question? Yeah, Jackie's asked the question, do we prune these trees after they get in the buckets? Yeah, you have to. Now, see, this is one that I should have already taken this cross limb out. You see this cross limb right here? We should have taken it out. Uh, I don't have a pair of pruners with me. I wanna, I'm going to break it to the back and try to get it out of there. It's not, that's not the way you do it. But anyway, uh, yeah, you can take them cross limbs out. Here's another little cross limb down here that needs to come out. That little limb right there needs to come out. And then you can take some of these, we got too many limbs in this, we need to take some of these center limbs out before we, before next spring. You kind of want your limbs to kind of grow out and cut the center out of it to where it's kind of empty so that as it makes on the fruit, where well, this is an apple tree, peach tree, plum tree, you want it all to where it can get some sunlight to your fruit. So yes, it's okay to clean a few of those limbs out of the middle. And maybe next spring we ought to make a, video about that, how to prune these, because you prune them in the early spring before they start leafing out. We don't like to cut them off in the fall because then to take the cold weather, it's a little hard on the tree. It's kind of like, doesn't have all of its clothes on it. So we want it to be fully dressed through the winter. I know it's going to lose its leaves, but it still has all of its limbs. And that'll get you through the winter into the early spring before it leaves out and then start cutting these limbs off. But yeah, you can even cut these long limbs back to make these grow out and make you some more limbs. You don't want it getting it real tall anyway. You want to keep these trees maintaining them about six to seven feet so you can reach the fruit. And that's about all that bucket will maintain is a tree about that size anyway. So yes, you can put these fruit trees in these wicking containers and do just fine with them. So if you like this uh, video, then ring the bell, punch the button and subscribe and we'll make you some more videos. Thank you.